again, how are you? I hope you enjoyed the previous videos about malware analysis, the malware on race. Um, well, the first one, if you remember, of if you haven't watched it, I will just put it at the top of this screen, was about the malware history, and the second one was about how we try to detect malware. And if you remember, we finished with this question that was about machine learning and artificial intelligence. That is solve the problem. That is solve the problem of detecting malware. So the answer is no. And today we are going to see why. Okay? So just bear with me. But we'll start talking about adversarial machine learning. So basically, when you try to train these machine learning algorithms, when you try to train these systems based on artificial intelligence, you have some trained data. The trained data has specific patterns, and you assume that the patterns are going to remain. This normally happens with a lot of things in nature. But the moment that you have an intelligent mind behind the malware, this might not happen. So basically what the adversarial is going to try to do is to disrupt the patterns in order to skip your detection system. That was basically what they have been trying to do since the beginning with the antiviruses. And that's the point of this hands race. Every time that we do a step forward and we try to improve the malware detection systems, the adversaries are also doing a step forward and they are just bypassing the detection system. And as I said in the first video, it's easier to be, to be successful when you are attacking than when you are defending. So for that reason, we need to go on and we need to try to understand adversarial machine learning because it will try to emulate how people manipulate malware. Even though it's not 100% precise because people don't use this directly, it will give us information about how sensitive and how robust of detection system is okay so when did start when did this started or some of the popular example so if you remember uh, there were two detectors of pdf malware that were very popular that were called pdf raid and hydos and basically in 2017 if i remember properly uh, yeah, i think it was 2017 there was this tool called evade ml that was basically created to disrupt PDF malware detection. What do they do? So they just extract the tree of the different connections of the PDF on how the PDF is constructed, and they started injecting benign sections in the tree. This injection was performed by a genetic algorithm, even though they have like a corpus of potential things that they could inject, and in order to guarantee that the file was still malicious and it was still working, they also have an oracle that was checking the malicious behavior of the file, okay? So basically, with multiple iterations of the genetic algorithm, that is just a search process, they were able to find combinations of uh, injections that make the malware look completely benign while it was still performing the malicious activity. And the question is, how successful they were? So if you just see this table here, you have the accuracy of the original methodologies that was in both cases 99% or even a bit closer to 100%. And then you have that they have almost no false negatives. So basically, they didn't skip any piece of malware. However, once we start adding these new variants that were smarter and they were using these systems to find ways to escape them, we found that the variants have 100% of success. None of the variant was detected. And that's actually a breakthrough because now you know that the system is not robust at all and you can just use the system to create variants that skip the system. Unfortunate, definitely. So, a few years later, we were thinking about Rebeltrate, this tool that was able to detect Android malware with a huge accuracy. And we were thinking, is it also possible to disrupt this tool? So we created Jagodroid. Jagodroid was basically just taking the information of the features that the tool was using to detect malware, checking which features in the same or similar way as the previous tool, checking which features might be more sensitive to the changes and just changing them. And it was able to basically disrupt the detection with almost no effort. And also with just one change, it was able to change the family that was detected according to the malware 
the Mauer family classification system. So because of that, we knew that not only the original PDF system, but also every possible system that is used to the malware was sacrificed or was in danger by this kind of adversarial attacks. If we go a bit farther, if you remember properly from the previous video, we also have a system that was able to detect malware using uh, entropy. So basically our system was based on entropy time series and we were wondering, hmm, do you think that it's actually possible to disrupt our system? Because our system was based on Windows malware and Windows malware is basically binaries. So we were thinking, okay, let's try to manipulate the entropy and let's try to find uh, specific manipulations that will be able to disrupt the detection of the system. And for that, we created a packing system. So this was a huge work of engineering because the packing system needed to get malware in binary files, compress it. We also had encryption. We also had some extra prote protections against dynamic analysis. We then create control entropy, entropy regions when we were manipulating the entropy and because of these regions, we wanted to change the region's position, but has some control. So we put also a genetic algorithm deciding where the entropy was going to and what was the level of entropy in each of these regions. And also we add a system that has to remove all of that in memory to allow the malware running. So we did a manipulation of UPX, that was the, the original packing system. And then we attack our system the entropy time series or ENDS and several systems based on malware binary analysis and basically all of them no exception fail after I think it was like seven generations of the genetic algorithm some of them fail after two or four our system was able to remain with us a no kiss detection until the seventh generation and once they fail they just plateau under the O5 detection so basically, it was very encouraging to continue the investigation about adversarial machine learning because it proved that it was quite strong. But also, it gave us the opportunity to rethink the way that we are applying machine learning. Because in this case, we just don't need to think about finding combinations of machine learning systems to detect malware, but also about robustness, also about future malware, also about what's going to be the next step when our system is out there and how they are going to try to evade it. Also, because we are a bit uh, tricky when we were creating um, the evolutionary packer, as we call it, we decided to attack real antiviruses. Sorry, attack. No, attack is not the word. To audit real antiviruses. So we were sending the same amount of malware manipulated by the different versions of the antivirus of the packing system to antiviruses, in this case, the antiviruses from VirusTotal, that were about 56 at that time. And we discovered that after adding the first encryption and the first control entropy regions, we were able to release, to, to, to reduce the detection from 80% of the renal malware to about, I think it's 12% after adding the control entropy regions, which it was surprising because we know that antiviruses are using signatures, but we didn't know that they were also using binary information because antiviruses are closed software. So then, what we discovered a few months later is that they learn from the malware and they increase the detection to about 30%. So we decided to make our entro control entropy regions more variable. We decided to attack again, and basically this reduced the detection abilities a little, but not much. However, after they relearn again the system, we discover that they were having false positives. So some pieces of the software that were only from UPX, from the packer, which is completely illegal um, and, and you can use it for anything, were detected and we discovered that just by packing the uh, binaries that were benign with UPX. We discovered that the antiviruses were targeting them as malware, which shouldn't happen. And it was when we introduced all of the evolutionary approach in order to decide where to put the entropy, the control entropy regions, and we also protected that section of UPX using just some polymorphism, and we were able to reduce the detection to about 20%, which was a very good plateau. 
So you can see that in this case, we kind of emulate the ANS rays and we call this hot housing. So basically in this case, we are emulating or co-evolving the two sections of the ANS rays trying to reach a plateau between the movements that we are doing that might be more disrupted with the movements that we are doing that might be more incremental. And this is very interesting because you can just extrapolate this to see how the algorithm can be co-evolving with different adversarial samples. So the question is, we know that adversarial machine learning is very powerful, so what, what can we do now? So even though I've been mentioning this before, what we can do now is testing machine learning. So for that, what I'm doing at the moment is to work on a tool called MLighter, and this tool is for testing the logic, the performance, and the security of machine learning algorithms. So the logic will be more or less what we have been discussing about adversarial machine learning. The performance could be related to performance issues of the algorithms, whether you are using some specific data, some specific configurations, etc., etc., how much memory, how much time you are consuming, how much resources of the system, GPU, CPU, etc., and also the security in terms of the implementation. You can just go to the low-level code, you can try to test it, you can try to identify problems in the implementation, and you can try to find bugs, crashes, vulnerabilities, etc. So a lighter is trying to be holistic, it's taking time because it's at the moment in the baby steps, but we are promoting it and we are also trying to make it more powerful. So if you are interested, you just you can find the link in the description. Just to give you a little bit of an overview of what Enlighter has been able to do in the first months of its life. So basically it was able to identify about 870 bugs in common machine learning libraries, concretely from Python and R. Um, 72 of these bugs were exploits, which is something, or at least were categorized as by the triage system that we use. So if you consider that, because bugs normally cost like 1.56 trillion dollars globally, these tools can help to reduce this cost and also we make them focus on QA testers and coders. So the idea is that it will ha it has actually a graphical user interface that can be used for by anyone who has a little bit of idea about machine learning and how the system works and they can actually use it just to test a model or to test an implementation of a machine learning algorithm with some limitations because still in the baby steps, but we are trying to make it more sustainable and more scalable with the time. With time, and it was also funded originally by Innovate UK. So we are uh, already a project that has getting some recognition from from the government. So, okay, we can test machine learning algorithms. So after you test it, what you can do? So basically, this will go back to the the idea of co-evolving machine learning. So you have your detection system, you have your evasion system, and you can try to create a co-evolution between both of them. So the idea is that you will find a counterattack to your attack, and you will try to do this automatically. So you will be able, in your hot housing, you will be able to identify ways to become more robust to these kind of attacks and with the idea of being always a step forward to the attackers because you have to defend and that's quite complicated. Okay, just to conclude, basically in the first video we were talking about the history of antiviruses and the history of malware and we reached the conclusion that antivirus are dead. During our second video we were talking about detection and we were talking about machine learning, artificial intelligence and how good it was in order to detect malware. But in this video, we were discussing a bit more about the limitations and how these algorithms can be defeated by adversaries. So for that, we will need new techniques, we will need testing machine learning, we will need to provide new methods that can make the system more robust to adversaries. So I hope you liked the video. Sorry if it was too long because it was divided in three different sections, but uh, just Keep in touch for the following videos and if you are interested just follow me and subscribe and press the alarm to get notifications about the videos. Okay, thank you very much and see you in the next one. Thank you.